Uh, my name is Rajana Ducar de Ponte, and uh, I am a representative of the Buryat Mongolian uh, Democratic Movement Erheten, uh, which means people are the champions of the law, of, of the right of peoples. Uh, and um, I am also a member of the Free Nations League, and um, this organization um, was created shortly after the start of this horrible war, and uh, it unites representatives of uh, Bashkirs, Kalmyks, Buryats, Tatars, Saha, Yakut, Chechens, uh, Ichkeria, Cossacks, Kalmyks, uh, and uh, also a re a regionalist movements such as uh, in Germanlandian movement. And um, the uh, reason for us to come together uh, was that uh, we decided that this is enough. We had enough of Russian imperialism. Uh, we have enough of being uh, colonies uh, that are uh, denied our right to exist, uh, uh, that uh, are denied our right to speak our languages. And um, we decided that only coming together, being united, we have this uh, opportunity to finally get our sovereignty and independence. Uh, because being together, it is, uh, it will be extremely difficult uh, for the central state to uh, subjugate us again. And uh, we have this uh, legend um, in uh, this secret history of Mongols. And this similar legend actually exists with every people. Uh, the uh, foremother of the golden king of Chinggis Khan, Alan Goa, once uh, brought together her sons who were fighting with each other. And she gave each of them a little twig, and she told them to break the twig. And the children could do it easily. Then she gave them two twigs and three twigs, and they were still able to break. And then she gave each of them a bunch of them, and they were unable to break those twigs. And so she uh, taught them a lesson, and she said, you need to stick together and no one will uh, be able to defeat you. And that's what we are, we are doing now. To, uh, I, I just uh, agree with everything that was uh, said before and uh, by Ruslan and uh, Rafis. And uh, I, they, they, they can comment pretty everything concerning that. And um, uh, maybe just a little bit. Uh, I know that uh, a lot of people in the West are afraid of uh, disintegration of Russia because a uh, very uh, gloomy, uh, gloomy images are being uh, presented to the uh, imagination of the people, especially by the uh, so-called, as you said, you mentioned uh, before Russian liberals such as Mikhail Khodorkovsky, uh, for example, uh, who say uh, who say that you know you need to actually support our idea of Russia. It should be a democratic Russian Russia true federation where uh, like rights, human rights. Uh, are valued and so on, but um, and they say that you know if you don't support us, then Russia will disintegrate and there will be chaos, there will be anarchy, uh, there will be uh, you know gangs. It's like uh, they are saying you know practically we are talking about some post-apocalyptic scenario of Mad Max, uh, you know universe. And uh, we are saying that this is not true. Uh, I think that if Russia prevails, it will eventually become such post-apocalyptic universe. It needs to be destroyed because 
it's, there's nothing really to cling to. There's nothing to value in this uh, huge empire. And this horrible war is showing the true nature of this empire. So it needs to be destroyed and new democratic states need to appear on its place. It's the only way. And we have uh, actually good examples of how uh, those countries that were able to gain independence after the uh, uh, end of the Soviet Union, like Baltic states, like Ukraine, uh, Moldova, uh, we have also in the East, uh, the example of Mongolia that is called uh, actually a, a paradise, democratic paradise. Uh, so it's, it's, we, we should not really think that preserving Russia we would gain anything because Russia was not able to build democratic society so they have nothing to really offer us. We need to uh, learn from those nations that were able to build democratic societies and that's the only uh, way out that I see. I would like to cite uh, Franz Fanon, who was already cited today. Uh, he said that uh, nationalism is a medicine for the wounds of colonialism. Uh, it is actually true that for a nations that are colonized, the only remedy to overcome the wounds, the trauma, and to gain sovereignty, first of all, to uh, decolonize themselves is nationalism. And it's not uh, that nationalism is something bad, something, um, it's like, you know, a, a disease that, you know, some uh, one needs to get rid of as soon as possible. And I, I think that Europe already is past the stage and we are only getting there, we are only trying to find our own grounds and uh, we are not against Russians for example because in uh, Buryatia I know a lot of people, Russians, my friends who are actually supporting the struggle they support us and they also think that it's, it's going to be better for everyone in Buryatia if we gain independence. Uh, in Siberia, uh, there are, for example, uh, Siberian regionalists. There are also regionalists in the Far East. And during uh, anti-Putin's protests several years ago, there were uh, slogans uh, saying that, you know, we don't need Moscow, we should not, we should stop feeding Moscow. And uh, it's, uh, it's, dis it's a distinct feature. Uh, the, this uh, Russian, so-called Russian Federation is actually a very superficial, uh, superficial structure. And uh, it is only, uh, there was a documentary actually, a uh, short uh, at the beginning of the 2000s. Uh, saying uh, oil, and um, it's, it was about Siberia sending oil and all the resources to Moscow and getting nothing, even, not even decent roads. There is, it, it's impossible to travel uh, from some parts of you know, Siberia because there are no roads, and even uh, air, uh, by air, it is impossible. For example, there was uh, uh, my, my friend from Saha in Kutia, uh, they needed to go to Magadan, which is really not that far from Yakutsk. And it was so expensive to fly from Yakutsk to Magadan, it made more sense to fly to Moscow and then from Moscow to Magadan. That's, that, that's what is Russian Federation, really. It's like no communication between regions, no ties, because this corrupt government, the corrupt government only think about how they can, you know, uh, get more and more and more wealth. 
and leaving those regions with nothing. Uh, that's why I think that uh, this question of, you know, uh, when, when people are afraid that somehow there will be uh, ethnic cleansing in this nation, in these new nation states, it's really, it doesn't uh, have really grounds because in Buryatia, Russians are the majority. And it's impossible for the minority that Buryats are, and we only like 30% of the population to do any of the, those things, right? So it's, it's not about, it's not about it. The uh, so-called Red Book of uh, ex ex uh, ex extinct uh, languages that are uh, disappearing languages, um, all languages uh, of the peoples that live in the Russian Federation are um, actually endangered are endangered. Uh, some languages are already dying languages, some are in a slightly better position, but uh, all but Russian. Uh, and yet uh, the Russian government is doing everything to promote Russian language, uh, not only in Russia, but also abroad, and it spends millions and billions of dollars for that. And right now uh, they are killing people in Ukraine for the sake of Russian language. And uh, also there is a big deal when, uh, uh, when for example, something happens in uh, the Baltic states and uh, there is a, a cry all over media in Russia that, uh, you know, Russian language is being um, somehow persecuted in those states. And no one uh, talks about dying languages in Russia. In, um, 2019, on September 10th, 2019, an Udmurt scholar and activist went, um, uh, he came to the central square of Saransk, the capital of Udmurt Republic, and he hold, uh, he, he was, uh, yes, Albert Razin, he was uh, holding a, um, a banner and it, it had words on it, if tomorrow my language disappears, I am ready to die today. These were the words of the uh, Dagestani uh, Awar poet Rasul Gamzatov. And after that, he uh, set himself on fire. The death, this horrible death of this uh, hero, really, uh, was a shock for every, everyone, everyone in the national republics because we felt for it, because it was what is happening to our languages as well. I'm sorry. This is a, a very emotional <coughs> moment. So uh, this year uh, we commemorated as a League of Free Nations we commemorated the death of Albert Razin by uh, holding a round table on the um, linguist, linguist side of the languages in the Russian Federation. Also, uh, we went to the um, uh, consulates of the Russian Federation in different countries uh, with flowers and with, uh, or, or, with um, uh, his portrait, portrait of Albert Razin and the uh, um, candles to commemorate his memory. Because um, he became a symbol of, uh, a symbol of a resistance, cultural. Doing it actually uh, by creating uh, such uh, partnerships as uh, Free Nations League. Uh, we are uh, creating uh, this future um, future space, safe space uh, for our nations to uh, coexist peacefully. And um, for example, if we are talking about Buryatia, uh, we have nothing to actually, um, uh, we, we, uh, well, uh, we, we don't have any claims to like uh, the territory of the two of the Tuba of, of Tuba or of Safa Yukutia, 
there are some, uh, of course, there are some uh, issues uh, about territories sometimes, but uh, it's uh, what is, uh, uh, if anything arises, then I mean, uh, they can be nego always negotiated, but uh, as I said, uh, really, uh, it's not. Um, it's it's not about. Um, uh, it, usually, you know, when uh, when you be talk about a separatism, it's like uh, when uh, a territory wants to um, uh, um, get get away from some central state. If we, we if we talk about Russia. Uh, we are talking about a failed state right now because it's, it is it is failing and it it will be failed a failed state state uh, pretty soon. So Russia won't have any resources to try and stop any region if they decide to uh, get away, and uh, that's why we are also talking about uh, not only republics but also regions because um, I'm from Siberia and I know that there is no uh, really deep connection of people who live in Siberia to Moscow. It's, uh, it's quite superficial, the, the whole structure, the whole country. And uh, I don't think that there will be any bloodshed after that. We have the example of uh, uh, for example, uh, the peaceful dissolution of the Soviet Union. And uh, I think that uh, it's not uh, all these uh, stories about uh, conflicts, they are a thing of the past. Mm.